Hello guys, uh, today we're going to have a look at some mixed quadratics and linear factorization. It's all in together this fine weather today, so this is really the acid test as to whether you can pick what to do guys, because they're all sitting in there camouflaged as it were, and you have to figure out what to do. So there's uh, quite a number of them to do, let's get going, and I want you to pause the video on each occasion before I show you what to do and I want you to try before I show you because that's really the most effective way for you to learn okay alright example one uh, we've got the following to factorize okay pause the video come back when you're ready okay see you soon alright you're back now number A 4x minus 16 that's a linear one guys can you spot the common factor common factor is 4 okay so it's 4 into x minus 4. That's a linear one. Okay, did you get it? Good for you if you did. Uh, if not, just uh, check it out, have another go, and you'll get confident. This uh, second one, difference of two squares, guys, difference of two squares. That is x squared minus 11 squared, which gets you x minus 11 times x plus 11. Okay, very good. What about number c now? This one, hmm... Well, I think I spot some grouping to do here, don't you? Uh, definitely. There's nothing squared, so it's not a quadratic. It's a linear kind of thing. Grouping would be the way to go, I would think. So let's see how I did this one. Uh, I've rearranged them after I had a bit of a look at it. Had a bit of a look at it, and I thought, hmm, well, yes, just swap them around a bit, and then group one and two, the, the first and second term, and then the third and fourth terms together. And I did it like that. And my goodness, it's working out beautifully, isn't it? So if we took out that C plus E term in the brackets now as a common factor, a binomial common factor in both of the these two terms, this term and this term, then what would we get? We'd get that. And that's the answer. Yes? Excellent. All right, uh, let's do D now. D is a classic quadratic trinomial, isn't it? So, let's think about that. Now, can you think of factors of 20 which can add or subtract to get 1? That's what I'm saying here, the coefficient of this term. That's, the, that's my preferred technique that I use. So, yes, I did think of them, and they were 5 and 4. And plus 5 and minus 4 gets you plus 1. So you go plus 5x minus 4x, because 5 times 4 plus 5 times minus 4 gets you minus 20. You know that by now, because I showed you that in a previous video, didn't I? Now you do the old group trick. So you go x into the uh, x plus 5, that's the first two terms taken care of, and then minus 4, usually I take the minus, the minus and the 4 out here, if there's a minus there, minus 4 into x plus 5. You change the sign of the terms in the brackets. So what have we got here? Common factor again, x plus 5, x plus 5 to keep us alive, and let's thrive and take it out. So we've got x plus 5 uh, is in common, and then x is left from here, and a minus 4 is left from there. So that's what we get. And Mr. Box, thank you so much for your faithful, dedicated service. Now, we've got E to do now. Oh, <laughs> I showed you the answer straight away. Uh, yeah, common factor. Common factor. Uh, 7x into 5x. Do you get that? Multiply it out again in your mind to make sure I'm right. It is 35x squared, isn't it? Yes. And then minus 1. So that's the answer to that one. Okay, we're going uh, very well here. We're running hot, guys. So let's do some more. Now, I want you to pause the video again before I show you how to do these, okay? Off you go. See you soon. All right, you're back. Okay, how did you go? Well, this first one's a bit tricky. Uh, this is one of those ones where you really, uh, if you try to group two and two, it's probably not going to work very well. No, in fact, it isn't going to work very well. And that's where you have to have your radar on and spot that this is not only uh, a quadratic trinomial, but it's a perfect square. Okay, that's what you do uh, with a situation like that. So it's x uh, minus, because there's a minus here, therefore there's a minus here, and the square root of this term here is 5, and 2 5s are 10. That's how you spot that it's a perfect 
square. So it's x minus 5 all squared. If you're not sure, you multiply it out again and make sure you believe me, because it is, it comes to that when you multiply it all out. Minus y squared. Difference of two squares now, guys, and you know what to do with that by now, don't you? First thing minus the second thing times the first thing plus the second thing, first bit thing being x minus 5, second thing being y. There it is, in all its glory. Yes? Okay, excellent. Uh, B, difference of two squares, except that 7 isn't a whole number um, square. A num it's, not the, it's not the square of a whole number, but it doesn't matter. We can just call 7 the square root of 7, all squared, and we do it that way. Okay, like that. So now that's a difference of two squares, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so you just do it like that, like I've showed you. Excellent job. Excellent job. What about C for you and me? Mm, quadratic trinomial. 11 times 1 is 11, and you can get from 11 and 1, you can get 10, can't you? Yes, so I think this is a whole number factoring one. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful, and it goes like this. Okay? Plus 11x minus x gets plus 10x, and and 11 times 1 gets 11. Uh, and you need this one to be the plus, and this one to be the minus to get the plus 10 happening up here. If you're not sure about what I'm saying, then you need to go back and have a look at the video for um, factorising quadratic trinomials. Okay, that was in uh, that's the second one in this series on the quadratics that I did. Okay, for you. So just go back and have a look at that if you're not sure, because what I'm saying here might be a bit double dutchy if uh, you haven't seen that video. Okay, so now we're going to group them uh, like I've showed you. Do you notice how this is a plus in here? If you take a minus 1 outside the bracket here, um, this minus x becomes a plus x in here, and this minus 11 becomes a plus 11 in here. Now you've got to be careful of that, the minus, this old minus trick out the front here, change the sign of the terms in the bracket, and then uh, once, once that's all done, we'll take out the common factor here, the binomial common factor, factor of x plus 11 out of each of those two terms that you can see there, this term and this term. What do you get? Yes, you get... Uh, x left over from this term and minus 1 left over from this term here and that's your answer okay good okay let's do another one now d uh, mm, a grouping one absolutely for sure a grouping one but i'm not sure whether the grouping is going to work as it is with the first and the second term and then again with the third and the fourth term i think we might have to do a little bit of rearranging here guys uh, and I'm looking at, yes, that's what I'm looking at. Mm -mm, looks much better. Because the first term doesn't have anything to take out in common, the first and the second terms here, but these do. These have y, y, o, y, don't they? And if you take y out of them, you'll get x minus 1, which looks very suspiciously like what we've got here. So I'll show you. Yes, get that? Yeah, that's what it is. Now we'll take out the x minus 1 out of both of those terms, and what do we get? 1 plus y, because there's a little silent 1 sitting outside this one here, you see? Yes, yes, and thank you, Mr. Box. All right, uh, let's, let's have a look at E. Mm, common factor, common factor. I usually sing my little students a song. It's called, Look for the Common Factor. Door, and you will have a much better life doodle 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 doodle. and there's another whole lot of um, lines that go after that but I won't uh, I won't cause you any more pain but you must look for the common factor and it's four four guys okay that makes this beastie much easier that's a common uh, quadratic trinomial factors of six are six and one and six plus one gets seven so we're in heaven and we can see what to do that's what you do now we group and we get that inside the brackets and you know what to do don't you of course you do there it is makes it a bit easier for you to see and we get da -da -da -da, there's the answer and now we can probably dispense with those large brackets here there you go and what do we get Da -da -da -da. There's the answer. Thank you, Mr. Box. Okay, we're ripping through them, aren't we? Okay, all right, we've got some more for you. So uh, if you need to have a little break and go and get a cup of tea or something, 
uh, do that um, before we do this next lot. Otherwise, let's keep going. So I've got all these. Good heavens above. Okay, pause the video. You have a go and come back when you're ready, okay? All right. How'd you go? Let's do them. Uh, this one here looks like a groupie, doesn't it? Definitely looks like a groupie. So um, I've rearranged it a little bit to make it more um, acceptable for a grouping situation. And what did I take out? You have a look. Well, it looks like I would take T out of the first two terms and probably minus 4 out of the second two terms, I think. Oh, yes, I did too. Goodness gracious, funny about that. Now we'll take out the u plus b, v, I mean, out of the um, that binomial term, out of here and here, and see what we get left with. And that's the answer. Jolly good show. Yes? Great. What about b now? Oh, that's a difference of two squares. For sure it is a difference of two squares. Even though this is a binomial term, it's still squared. It makes no difference to the concept of difference of two squared. Okay, this is two squared, so that's what it is. Now, we just say, okay, the first term minus the second term times the first term plus the second term, and then this is what you get. Now, this is a little bit interesting because this gets us x minus 4, and this just gets us x because those two terms knock each other out, don't they? Plus 2 minus 2 is nothing. Okay, so the answer would be that, which you usually write like that, okay? Terrific. Now, what about C? Ah, I can see a... Da, 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 da. And you, da, 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 you know what to do, 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 Yes, what is the common factor? It's three. Of course it is three. Now, uh, we'll just leave that little three outside the bracket, minding his own business, and we'll just deal with what's in here. It's a difference of two squares, isn't it? You can see that. Yes? Well, let's just do it, according to the way that we've been shown. And what do we get? What do we get? Come on, you know what to do. Yes, that's what to do. Now, we're just going to clean this up now and we're done. So that's x minus 7 times x minus 1. And there it is. There's the answer. Yes, fantastic. Let's do d for you and me. Mm. Well, that's a difference of two squares as well. See, this whole thing squared minus this whole thing squared. It doesn't matter if they're binomial terms. It does not matter at all all okay so we'll just say well it's this one minus this one times this one plus this one and oh goodness what happened there oh yes well i've done a square bracket just to sort of so i don't get too messed up here because there's brackets everywhere so it's the first one minus the second one times the first one plus the second one and that gets us if i start just uh, getting back to normal looking brackets and just take away this bracket here and be very careful when taking away this bracket here because you get minus 3x minus y. Remember when you're multiplying that, that bracket out, uh, please don't get that wrong. You've got to get those minuses sorted out. Now this is x plus 3y plus 3x plus y. Now we've just got to clean it up guys. So it's just um, cleaning up your like terms. So that would be minus 2x plus 2y, yes, and that would be 4x plus 4y, and I can see common factors again. Oh, goodness, there's 2 in this one and this one, and there's 4 in this one and this one, isn't there? So let's just fix that up. Yes, that's right. So I took a minus 2 out there, so remembering to change this to a minus y in here, just, if you're not sure, multiply it out again and make sure it works. This is 4 times x plus y. All right. Now, that's all right. Now, we're going to multiply this minus 2 by this plus 4 and put the number out the front, which is what we usually do. So it'll be minus 8 x minus y times x plus y. And it is factorized to within an inch of its life, yeah? To within an inch of its life. Okay. You happy? Did you get that? Hmm. Well, it's good practice, isn't it? So here's E for you and me. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> What's this? <clears throat> well, this looks like a quadratic trinomial, except that we've got a binomial term squared plus five times the binomial term plus four. 
what I usually tell my students to do in situations like this is just avoid the horrible complication and just call this binomial term something else and just re-express it in terms of the new term that you call this x minus 2. You could call it u, for example, okay? You have a look, I'll show you if I'm confusing you. You just let u equal x minus 2. So you're down to a single symbol again for whatever this x minus 2 is happening here and where it's happening here, and you get this. Now that's much easier to factorise, isn't it? It's a quadratic trinomial, which will be very easy to see. Factors of 4 would be 4 and 1, because they add up to 5. So you write it like that, as I've showed you, and then you group. Okay? You get that. Now, uh, when we take out this common factor here, this u plus 4 from here and from here, there's a little silent plus 1 sitting there. Okay, 1 times u plus 4. So you get, yes, that's right, and you get um, you get that. Now, okay? Now, when you're out of danger and you've got the whole thing factorised, remembering that we made up... Um, u out of our own imagination, it was really x minus 2. So now when it's safe to do so, we can substitute back what u was. Okay, now let's do that. Oh, goodness, and a little bit of cleaning up and we're done, guys. So that's going to be x plus 2 times x minus 1, <clears throat> and that was lots of fun, a ton of fun. Well, <laughs> you probably don't agree, but when you get good at them, they are, they're really a ton of fun. Uh, that's example three. My goodness, we demolished it, didn't we? Now, I think there's one more to go, so you better pause the video and uh, have a go before I reveal them to you. Oh, my goodness. They look very, very awful. So, come on, grit your teeth and have a go and make fun out of them, okay? All right, um, how did you go? Yes, they look uh, disgusting, but they're okay, actually. They're friendly. They're really, really friendly. So I'll show you how I did them. Uh, what I did was I factorised this beast here into this, okay? I factorised this one here into this. Now, this one here, this x squared minus 9 is a difference of two squares, and this one here, this thing here, is another quadratic trinomial. Now, when you do that, uh, now we do cancellation city. <laughs> we cancel everything that can cancel. But you can only cancel a whole, a whole binomial term with another whole binomial term. You can't go separating the x's or the numbers and just cancel those uh, out individually because that is the worst thing you could ever do. It's the cardinal sin of algebra. So don't <laughs> commit to the cardinal sin of algebra. So this is what you do, I'll show you. Okay, they cancel out. The x minus 3 cancels top and bottom, okay? The whole lot of it with itself, right? Now, are there any more that you can see that would cancel? Well, there is something else. There's this, right? That cancels out. Now, um, okay, so what are we left with here? We've got an x minus 2. There's no x minus 2s on the bottom, so that guy stays. Um, this one here, x plus 1, there's no x plus 1 on the bottom. So that's, I think that's as far as we can go, guys. I think that's as far as we can go now. As I said before, don't go cancelling, say, x with x. That's completely wrong. It's either all or nothing. You have to cancel the whole term with a whole term. If the whole term doesn't exist um, on the denominator here, well, then you just leave it alone, okay? So we just gather up what we've got left with and we express it like that. That's the answer. Don't multiply it out again, just leave it like that. That's fine. That's a factorised, very neatly, nicely little packaged up answer. Okay? All right, very good. What about B? Now, B is, um, is very, very um, tricky because of this dividing sign here. This dividing sign, the first thing you do, the first thing you do before you do anything else is you write it out as a multiply. And when you're dividing by a fraction, which we are here, you have to invert the fraction, and turn it upside down and turn the divide sign into a multiply. So this denominator goes on the numerator, and this numerator goes on the denominator. Now that's what you do. That's the first thing you do. Please, please don't make the mistake of not doing that. Okay, now, we're going to factorise the whole thing now. That's a perfect square. That's x plus 5 all squared. This thing's a quadratic trinomial, which is this beastie here. Okay, 
Did you get that? Good. This one here is another perfect square. Uh, it's x plus 2 all squared. And this one here is another quadratic trinomial which uh, factorises to this. Now, it's time for cancellation city. Guys, have a look. Cancellation throughout the nation. What would you like to cancel first? Well, I think I'd like to cancel those two. The x plus 5s. Uh, is there anything else? Just scanning it. Yes, there is something else. Goodness. Uh, those x plus 2s will go, and I also think there's something else, isn't there? Yes, the x plus x minus 1s will go. Heavens, it just about all went, didn't it? And we've just got left with x plus 5 on the top and x plus 2 on the bottom, and that's our answer, and thank you, Mr. Box. All right, how did you go? Did you get some value out of this today? I hope so. That's the end of our little show. Uh, you need to do a lot of practice, though, to get really good at, th at these, because these are the language of maths, they are abstract and they give students a lot of trouble. So do yourself a favour and train that beautiful adaptable brain of yours on how to do these by doing lots of practice, okay? And we'll see you soon. Thanks for coming and all the best.